Hey everybody, uh, it's Joseph Boyden being very punctual at 4 p.m. Give a couple of minutes if people are joining late. Uh, just want to say thanks to the Rabinovich family and the other people for keeping everyone connected. I think it's a wonderful idea and uh, I'm very happy that uh, we're able to connect writers and readers. It's a lovely, lovely idea and a lovely thing. I'm just seeing people are clicking in saying hi, I wave back. It's my first time doing this kind of thing, the Instagram live, so I hope I'm, uh, hope I'm doing it correctly. Somebody wave and say, yes, we can hear you. What I thought I'd do is, uh, um, thank you, True78. Uh, what I think I would do today is uh, just read the beginning of uh, my novel, Through Black Spruce, the first couple of pages, it, it was probably one of the greatest moments of my life was winning the Giller back in 2008, among some other just incredible writers and people. And uh, so I thought I'd just share the first couple of pages and then we can maybe have, please ask questions. And, uh, and uh, after I finish this short reading, I'd love to be able to chat with you. When there was no Pepsi left for my rye whiskey nieces, there was always ginger ale. No ginger ale. Then I had river water. River water's light like something between those two. And brown moose river water's cold. Cold like living between two colors, like living in this town. When the whiskey was crown royal, then brown moose river water was a fine, fine mix. You know I was a bush pilot, the best but the best have to crash, and I've crashed a plane, me, three times. I need to explain this all to you. I was a young man when I crashed the first time. The world was wide open. I was scared of nothing. Just before Helen and I had our oldest boy, the first time I crashed, I was drunk, but that wasn't the reason I crashed. I used to fly a bush plane better with a few drinks in me. I actually believe my eyesight improved with whiskey goggles on. But sight had nothing to do with my first crash. Wait, it had everything to do with it. Snowstorm, zero visibility. As snow blinded my takeoff from the slick runway, I got the go-ahead with a warning from the Moosini flight tower. Harder snow coming. <coughs> An hour later and I made it 100 miles north of Moose River on my way to pick up trappers, not wanting but needing to come in from their lines. I rushed to find them with night coming. I had a feeling where they'd be. Me, I was a natural in a plane, but in snow? One minute I'm humming along, the next my fuel line's gummed and I'm skidding and banging against a frozen creek. The crazy thing, had I come in a few feet to the left or right, blind like I did, I would have wrapped my plane around black spruce lining the banks, had a mush on the steering, broken legs burning on a red-hot motor. The grandparents sometimes watch out. Chi Miigwech. <clears throat> my plane wasn't too damaged, but this was a crash nonetheless, and I emerged from my first true brush with it, the long darkness, no need to speak its name out loud. Soon as I forced the door open, the snow, it stopped falling, like that, like in a movie. And when the cloud cover left on a winter afternoon, a hundred plus miles north of Moussigny in January, the cold came, presented itself in such a forceful way that I had two choices. <clears throat> The first was to assume that the cold was a living thing that chased me and wanted to suck the life from me. I could get angry at it, desperate for some sense of fairness in the world, and then to begin to panic. Or my second option was to make up my mind that cold, that nature, was just an unfortunate clash of weather systems. If I made my mind up the second way, that the physical world no longer held vengeance and evil just beyond the black shadow of spruce, then I'd try and make do with what I had. And when I realized what an idiot I was for ending up here all alone without the proper gear, just a jean jacket with a sweater under it and running shoes on my feet, I'd get angry, desperate for some sense of fairness in the world, and begin to panic. Me, I preferred the first option, that Mother Nature was one angry slut. She'd try and kill you first chance you got, she got. You'd screwed with her for so long that she was happy to eliminate you. But more than that, the first option allowed me to get angry right away, to blame some other force for all my troubles. The panic came much quicker this way, but it was going to come anyways, right? 
And so me, I climbed out of the cockpit onto the wing on that frigid afternoon in my jean jacket and running shoes, walked along the wing, fearful of the bush and the cold and shitty death all around me. I decided to make my way to the bank to collect some firewood and jumped onto the frozen creek. <coughs> I sank to my chest in that snow and immediately realized I was a drunken fool. The shock of fast-flowing ice water made my breath seize, tugging at my legs, pulling at my unlaced running shoes, so the last thing I felt was my feet and those shoes tumbling away with the current. Excuse my coughing, it's a bit dry down here. Uh, that's the opening to uh, Through Black Spruce. And again, feel free to ask questions in the next little bit, but uh, um, this is a novel, it was a second novel in what originally I'd seen as a trilogy, but all of my books seem to be related by this one family, the bird family, this imagined family. And uh, the Orenda is the beginning of this family, and uh, Three Day Road is that family in First World War. Um, I've been working on other projects as well that involve the birds, and uh, hope to be able to share it with you all soon. Um, I see a number of people I recognize. Hi, Elena. I saw Brett. Hey, Brett. <coughs> Please, if anyone has a question, I don't know if I'm... Here we go. How are you keeping busy during this time of social isolation? True asks. Uh, we're living up on Mill Lake just outside of Parry Sound, and uh, I've got two, a one-year-old and a two-year-old. And so my partner, Laura, and I are uh, <laughs> very busy raising them. Uh, it's, we're really lucky. We're on a lake. We've got some outdoor uh, area to, to wander around on. And uh, and the kids are, um, we're really blessed to have these two beautiful children, Deze and Tiba. Um, so that's how I'm keeping. And again, I know I'm very lucky to have this outdoor space. I know a lot of people are stuck in the city and, uh, and often in small apartments. So I, I thank my stars uh, for that. Somebody asks a reader, her, how do you stay hopeful during a time like this? I've always had uh, a real uh, belief in the goodness of humanity. And I don't think that's changed at all over my years. I think even now, I think we're seeing a lot of the best of. And I think there's a lot harder times to come, unfortunately. Um, and so I think that uh, just having that belief and watching what's going on and listening that for the most part, we're showing our good side and that's, that's keeping, me, keeping me strong. And then I'm writing every morning. I've got a really strong routine, which I think is super important. I get up really early, right before the children are up and then spend my day with the children. And so uh, that's one way to do it. I see quickly, so I'll scroll up and down on questions. Elaine asked, what am I reading right now? Uh, I just started American Dirt. I heard all of the, uh, all the buzz about it, all of the stuff about it and I wanted to make up my own mind so I've just begun that and uh, I like it so far for sure um, what music am I listening to these days uh, good question uh, we've got that Alexa you know Amazon so uh, every morning first thing I do with the boys is, is uh, hit uh, tell Alexa play uh, classical music and then it quickly uh, devolves into Baby Shark uh, so it's, I think Baby Shark is probably the best answer for what, what lifts me up. <laughs> um, what am I cooking? Oh, good question. I'm trying to learn how to cook with two little ones in my life. It's, it's become actually kind of important. Uh, we are, I've got tons of spaghetti in the pantry, tons of red beans and rice from my days in New Orleans. Uh, cans of tuna, uh, a lot of salads too. I think it's really important. So eating healthy and teaching them how to eat healthy. Uh, so I'm actually not eating as much pasta as, uh, as my pantry would, would suggest. I'll scroll back and see uh, other questions. Daphna asked a good question. Hi, Daphna. Uh, who would you say influenced my work the most? Huh, that's a really good question. I think when I look back, uh, Louise Erdrich was a huge influence on the idea that writing can be, you know, a strong narrative driven book can be beautifully written, can be poetic. Um, she taught me that for sure. Um, Ernest Hemingway, I always go back to as somebody who who knew how to tell a story um, and just uh, and tell it simply or it seems simple on the surface. And uh, I always love that, that a story can be both beautiful and simple on the surface and you can dig through the layers of it as it unfolds. Um, 
I keep looking for questions. Did you always know you wanted to be an author? That's from Sierra Marie. Uh, I did, actually. From when I was quite young, I wanted to be two things. I wanted to be a teacher and a writer. And so I feel in some ways my life was just kind of driven to become those two things. And, and I remain, you know, I remain both of those things. Um, I've got a question from Laura Vuxen. Hmm. What's your best time to write? I would say super early in the morning when you're still sleeping with the kids. Uh, when's a new book coming out? I'm asked by, that's a hard name to say, Geological Guy. I, oh, Geo Illogical, that's good. Um, hopefully next year, we'll see. Uh, I'm a patient person and I can't put out a book until it's ready, till it's really baked. And sometimes that takes a long time. So best case scenario next year, I think longest is two years, so. Oh, hey, Uncle Joe. That's my hey, my niece, Rachel. How are you feeling? I hope you're feeling well up in the in the north, in the far north. I hope things are treating you well there. Oh, it's that's Fred. Hey, Fred from Grossmorn. Good question. It's nice to hear your voice too. As you guys can tell, I'm not uh, not totally adept at this whole Instagram thing and social media in general. I was on it for a while, and you know, I found it was. Life was better without it, interestingly enough. But in times like this, I can understand the connection that people are able to keep and to make, especially uh, when all of us are feeling a bit like shut-ins. Um, I'm just going back to, to looking at questions. Some of my favorite authors, I think it's the same. Louise Erdrich, Ernest Hemingway, Robertson Davies, when I was younger, really I loved and... Uh, uh, Margaret Atwood remains one of the greats. What's my favorite memory of winning the Scotiabank Killer Prize? True asks. That's a that's a wonderful question. Uh, I remember the night being a real blur, um, not being used to that much attention focused on on me, and uh, seeing Bob Ray and Margaret Atwood and uh, and Colm Toy Bean as the judges as incredible people. I just remember, uh, and I, my mom was my guest, which was really great. And she's doing well, by the way. Blanche is 89 shortly and, and doing very well and living down the road from me. Uh, she's sitting beside me and the announcement and then the kind of quiet while they're opening the envelope and then my name, which I didn't think was going to happen. I had no idea was going to, didn't want to believe was going to be uh, called and and I remember just kind of floating up to the stage, wondering what the heck I was going to say uh, as a thank you and trying desperately not to forget anyone. And if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to, to take one or two more. I don't want to keep you all too long. Um, again, it's a great idea to, to, to connect with a with everyone this way it's a bit strange like people are saying uh what's it like socially isolating for you and i said oh i've been doing it for the last few years it's it's pretty normal uh but it's been good and love seeing friends and family getting on here to say hi to me too so i'm sending you all love and uh and be well be safe keep connected and uh and I hope to see you all in person as soon as is possible. Uh, thank you all very much. We'll talk again soon.